Hi there! Welcome to a new Q&A video on the Sugar Do channel. My name is Irene and today we're going to tackle a question and it's going to be a experiment for me. So I haven't prepared this, I haven't tried this before, I just have an idea and I think it would help you a lot if you struggle with this question. The question is can I quilt a quilt on an old sewing machine? So let's say you have a sewing machine like I have that can only do a needle up and down. That's the basic function for a quilting machine, right? So if you have a sewing machine like that and you want to do ruler work, you want to quilt a big quilt on it, I think you can. So on this quilt I have quilted a big quilt for my mom. and. I did that with meandering, so I only did free motion quilting on it and I was very new to quilting at that moment, so th this machine was the only thing I had and I managed. We, I, I made a quilt and it was awesome. So um, it's definitely possible to quilt a quilt on a sewing machine like this. But the next question is, can you do ruler work on it? So. To be able to do ruler work, you need a kind of a bigger base. When I did free motion quilting on this machine, I used a kind of a slide on table that belonged to a different sewing machine that kind of fitted this uh, show sewing machine. Um, so I used it like that, but um, I know that not all sewing machines have that and you might not have uh, a slide on table from a different sewing machine at hand so uh, let's see if we can MacGyver something that works on a sewing machine like this so we just want to make a bigger surface so I found some material and let's see if we can make it work before you want to start to build something for your sewing machine you want to Make sure that you have a foot that can do ruler work. At least if ruler work is the thing you want to do with your machines. So I'm taking off this foot and going to replace that with a ruler foot. So this is a low shank foot and I have a video on how to measure if your machine needs a low shank or a high shank. It has to do with the height of the foot and the height uh, behind the foot. So just check out that video, I will link it down below first to see what kind of foot you need and if there's something for your machine. And then let's place it on the machine. There we go, so screw that in place. And then when you put your foot down, you can adjust the height that you want. So that depends on the thickness of your quilt. So there we go. Um, yeah, so that's set. And then the next thing is that you want to um, lower your feed dogs. And on this machine, have an easy option. Here it says down and up. But even with having it down, you can see that um, the feed dogs will still move while, when I um, turn my needle. Uh, but they won't really come up above the surface but when I go over with my finger I could still feel them so I think they will still grab the fabric so I have something for that as well so if you don't have the option to lower or uh, lower your feed dogs I'll have you covered on that yeah so uh, now it's time to build something to make this workspace larger because when you have a ruler you want to lean it somewhere, uh, lean it on the surface somewhere, so this is not big enough to uh, do roller work. So let's get started. So what I have here are some boxes, and I have tape, and I also have a kind of plastic material. And this is called template plastic. So it was something that my mom had in her sewing room. So that's why I knew this material existed. So uh, it's called template plastic. You can make templates from it used in quilting. And this is also what I used when I meandered the whole quilt on this machine. Um, so what I did with that is cover up the feed dogs. Um, I took a little bit of this plastic 
I cut a hole in it where the needle should go through and then I taped it on my machine. So that meant that when the feed dogs would come up below this plastic material, uh, they would not uh, grip the fabric. So I'm going to do that again, but now I'm not going to make this uh, a small piece of plastic a sheet, but I want to have it the whole surface because it's nice and uh, smooth, so I guess it will um, the fabric will glide over it pretty nicely so yeah so this is the base of what I would like but then of course we need to have something below here uh, to um, yeah allow us to put pressure on here with a ruler so let's set this aside for a little bit and um, I looked around in my studio and I found some boxes that were almost the same height as my sewing machine. So I think, so my theory, we're just going to test it, um, is that when I put this around my sewing machine and tape them together and put a plastic sheet on top, that that would make a pretty good quilting table. Of course, when you have a nice new sewing machine, uh, there's no need for this, but especially for quilters who have an older machine at home and also want to do roller work or quilting or free motion quilting, uh, you just have to make uh, you just have to make do with what you have. So let's see what we can do here. Just need one more box, I guess. I think that looks okay. Um, so what else would I want? Um, I guess behind here there's still a pretty big gap. So it would be nice to fill up that area. Let's see if we can find something for that. Found something. So there was a uh, old phone box case and that just fits perfectly in here. So there we go. Um, yeah, so this fits and uh, I think it looks pretty good. So let's get a quilting ruler, see how that moves around. I think this could work. So this is a thick quilting ruler uh, and this is a low shank. Uh, foot, so that's not going to work uh, all the way around. I should use a thinner low shank ruler on this machine, but I think this would be quiltable. So now, of course, you need to make sure that everything stays in place. Um, yeah, so that nothing gets loose and slips on your machine while you're quilting. So I know this is a really macgyver way of setting up something. It would be way better if you are handy with wood or you know something, somebody that is who can build you such a kind of table to go around your machine. But I know that um, sometimes you just need to uh, do with what you have and uh, you just want to start quilting and you don't have the skills or people around or material to build something so this is just stuff that I found and a piece of quilting plastic um, yeah so let's get some tape put this together and give it a try so now of course you need to make sure that everything stays in place um, yeah, so that nothing gets loose and slips on your machine while you're quilting. So I know this is a really macgyver way of setting up something. It would be way better if you are handy with wood or you know something, somebody that is who can build you such a kind of table to go around your machine. But I know that um, sometimes you just need to... Uh, do with what you have and uh, you just want to start quilting and you don't have the skills or people around or material to build something so this is just stuff that I found and 
a piece of quilting plastic. Um, yeah, so let's get some tape, put this together and give it a try. So what I think I want to do is uh, especially tape the boxes together and not so much tape it against my machine or to my machine because you also want to be able to change your bobbin if needed. So don't tape anything to your machine. But let's tape this together so that we give it a little bit more structure. So that's starting to look like a slide on table. Oh, and I made sure that these boxes are pretty heavy. So there are, um, there are heavy things in there, or maybe you could put box, uh, books in there or something like that. So that they stay nice and steady on your table. So now the only thing is to see if I want to do something with this little box, because that's not combined in the slide on table, but I think I can keep this as a loose element because it's nice and snug between the boxes. And actually this feels kind of sturdy. So I think that's good. Um, I can still move it around and get to my bobbin. Uh, yeah. That's good. So now the plastic sheet. Uh, that should go here. So now I need to make a little hole in there um, and to determine the area where I want to have that. I think I'll just go ahead and pin a little hole on it by moving my needle up and down. There we go. So now I have a tiny hole in here and I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger hole. That's big enough so my needle won't collide with it when I'm sewing. So, putting this back in place. Then I need to make sure that the plastic goes in place as well. Let's remove this sticker first. So, there we have a little hole in the plastic. And that can go where the needle should go. See, then I may need to make it a little, little bit wider. There we go. That's bigger and that's better. So let's place it over here. That goes there. And I think it is the safest to do tape this to my machine so that the plastic is not going to slide so that my needle doesn't need to pinch through the plastic. <laughs> well, actually, this space stays in place really nicely. So let's see, my needle can go up and down all the way. That looks really good. Nice, so I'm going to get a uh, test piece. And let's see if we do, can do some quilting on this. Just wanted to show you from all sides first what it looks like. So again, this is not a professional setup, but I think, I think it's pretty safe because these boxes don't move. This plastic is play, uh, taped in place so that our quilt will slide over here and the worst thing that can happen is that the boxes do slide while quilting and that my needle will pinch through this plastic sheet but i've already tested that out and that's no big deal so yeah also in this side on this side everything is nicely in place and the quilt can slide over here and have a, has a nice big surface to land on so let's get that test quilt Okay, so of course I wanted to test run this before I press play on the camera, but I haven't. So 
I have a test piece over here and I haven't tried it out, but I just checked and, oops, a little threat. Um, the plastic is in place, the boxes are in place, and here we have a test piece for quilting. It slides under the quilt, uh, under the foot, very easily. So let's pick up that thread. There is our bobbin thread. And let's do some stitching. Okay, first test run done. I'm going to fix some of my uh, tension settings on here because I haven't used this machine in a long time and then I'll get back. So I changed my bobbin thread so I could really see the color, but as you can see here, my bobbin thread is still popping up. So the tension is off and I have my top tension already really low. So it's almost zero. I'm just going to um, make the bobbin thread a little bit higher and then um, going to try it again. So that is looking kind of okay. I guess when you're not working with a blue bobbin thread, it would look pretty decent, these stitches. So I'll go with this, I'll grab a ruler, and then let's see if I can do ruler work with this. So there we go, a low shank ruler, um, some gloves so that I have more grip. Let's see if we can do this. So the ruler can slide around the foot and it's not even when I press down, it's not going to catch under the foot. So I think that's all good. Let's see what happens. Well, I think we can call this a success. So of course, as you can see, my stitches are pretty irregular. Um, that's because I have not used this machine in a while. Um, I'm a little bit rusty with moving the, the fabric, so I think when we give it a few more tries, I think stitches will get more regular. But the main thing is that it works. So we can do ruler work on a pretty old machine. What you will have with this is, you can also see it in my stitches, so here a few stitches will be skipped. And that may depend on the direction in which you're quilting. So not all machines like all directions. Um, you, you just have to experiment with that when you're working with an older machine. Uh, because they are just made to sew in one direction. They like always like this direction the best. That's the normal direction for a sewing machine and a reverse direction. I can see with this machine that I have some skip stitches when I, when I do it. See, here are quite a lot of skip stitches, but when I go this way, there are no skip stitches. So maybe also in the diagonal direction. This looks pretty good. And then going sideways. That's also good. So just um, give it a try with your machine uh, because probably if you're working on an older machine, it will have some preference on the direction. So that was a fun experiment. Um, I really had fun uh, building this setup and answering the question, quite uh, a long answer <laughs> for such a short question. Is it possible to do ruler work to quilt on a very old sewing machine? Yes, it's possible. And I think having a surface to work on like this really helps because you have a place to hold your ruler on. And uh, of course, it's prettier if you um, buy a table that fits your machine or if you build it from wood or something like that or have a friend or family member help you build it that's perfect but um, even with stuff like this boxes and just a sheet of plastic with a little hole in it uh, perfect it works so um, please be careful with what you add to your machine um, yeah just be careful and think it through test it out a little bit and see uh, try to see what can go wrong and I think in this case 
it's quite uh, foolproof so uh, yeah it works and I can quilt on my old Lewenstein sewing machine with a ruler I don't think the manufacturers of this sewing machine had this in mind that we would do this these kind of things with such an old sewing machine but it works and for the directions um, if you're working on an old sewing machine um, try to see what directions uh, of quilting your machine likes so if it doesn't like to go in one direction please remember that and then when you're quilting rotate your quilt when you have to move in that direction just rotate it a little bit to go with the preference of your sewing machine I hope this helps and that this inspires you to try to quilt on your sewing machine and work with what you have at hand. Please let me know in the comments below if you're going to try this out or if you think that was a wild and crazy idea, Irene. Uh, just let me know what you think. I would love to hear if you're working on a new quilting machine or an old sewing machine and um, what you're capable of, uh, of making with it. I would love to hear it in the comments down below and thank you so much for watching. I would love to see you again next week in a new Q&A Tuesday video. Thanks!